Hi everyone. Today we will see one intro question. Why generally as a cloud support engineer, sometimes you require to perform some backup operations from your live EC2 instances. So if someone asks that I have some EC2 instance running with uh, Node.js and Java-based application under some specific directory, how we can take a backup of that directory and without using management console of AWS cloud, how we can upload that backup into S3 bucket. So it is really very easy into the question, but the interviewer wants to check your knowledge with different aspect where he or she is checking your Linux command line experience for taking a backup. And he and she is also trying to check your AWS CLI exposure. So let's uh, understand this question. When any application is running on Linux system, ultimately it might be having some data in some particular directory. Here, the question is that the application is running under slash web app directory. So we can assume that the developer team had created one directory under slash, which is a main root partition of the Linux OS. And in that directory, some sort of data or application uh, code is inside this directory. So uh, here I have also tried to uh, explain that if you want to reproduce this entire scenario on your Linux uh, EC2 instance, you can install uh, Node.js software on your Linux command line with the help of this uh, URL. And then ultimately with EM command, you can do Node.js installation. So after Node.js installation, you can check the version and you can check the help. So you will confirm that my Node.js is installed on my Linux server. If you are comfortable by downloading from the tarball, then again, here is a Node.js website URL under download section. You can download the specific tarball and you can do the inst uh, installation of Node.js via that method. Okay, so coming back to the question that uh, slash web app directory is containing Node.js application. So here I have created a small application uh, with an uh, under web slash web app directory and uh, Node.js. And that is a file named ashish.js. Imagine that is a program written with Node.js. And if I run that particular JS file, it is giving me a message that welcome to the Node.js world. And this is a small application. Now, if you want to take a backup of this directory, so let's uh, start that process. First of all, we can check the size of that particular directory with the du command and the tar command which is very useful very helpful for creating a backup of any text file any directory on your linux operating system so the tar command has some uh, structure like we have a command structure with cp command mv command ls command so in tar command we will use a few parameter like c z v f for creating a new backup file with verbose mode this is what all these options means. And I want to create that backup. I want to create a backup of slash web app directory. So I will use that location of which I want to create a backup in the last and with tar command. First, I will use this parameter and I will create one file with any generic name, which I wish like I have tried here web dash app dot tar dot zz. And I want to create this backup file under temp directory on my Linux machine. So first I had used a slash TMP directory. Under that, this new backup file will be created. And the backup of slash web app directory will be taken by tar command and will be placed in this location. So this is my absolute path where the new backup file will be created and placed by the tar command. So we can see here, it's commands executed successfully. It has done the listing. And now we can check the size of that backup file. Now moving to the next point where we want to upload the same file which we have created in my S3 bucket. So I assume you all know how to configure AWS CLI. Nowadays on Linux, Amazon Linux, the by default AWS packages are installed, CLI packages are installed. If we try checking AWS hyphen hyphen version, AWS SLS, if it is not configured, we can easily use AWS configure command and 
it asks for the access key, secret access key uh, region. Then we check again if we have the permission, the user which we have configured via AWS CLI, we will be able to list the all bucket. Now, with AWS CLI, even we can create a new bucket. So we can use this option, AWS S3 MB, and whatever bucket name you want to create, we have to use this path, or you can give any generic name over here. Now, once bucket is created, we can do listing of that bucket and with AWS S3 CP command, we can copy the entire backup which we have created under temp directory and we can place into some specific S3 bucket. So it is really, really very easy. Just keep this AWS S3 SP uh, CP command, which is very useful for copying any object in our S3 bucket. So this is way by which we can upload any file, any backup file on our S3 bucket from AWS CLI. So guys, this is very useful in the production environment and many times many system administrator, many cloud engineer and DevOps engineer use the same method for taking backup of few files and directories which are very important from the application point of view in various S3 buckets. So they can use it anywhere, anytime. Now, once you have a uh, backup uh, in your S3 bucket, you can download it from anywhere and to extract your backup, uh, which is created as a tar.zz, you can use this tar command to unzip. It is kind of unzipping your data. So tar xzvf is option by which we will uh, extract our file and the original data will be available to us. So here I have again done an extract of our backup in temp directory by this command and the new directory created web app and inside web app if i check all my data is available so guys um, this is very useful interview question and i request everyone to uh, have a look um, this before you appear in the interview thank you thank you very much hi Many times in interview questions of the DevOps engineer or as a Linux system admin engineer or a cloud professional, we face this interview question that what is LS OF command on Linux operating system, which is widely used as a web server, as a database server, or many other application servers. We know that Linux is very stable, secure, and open source operating system. But many times as a professional, DevOps professional, we face an issue while we are doing monitoring of our application servers. Application could be developed in whatever programming language. It could be developed in the Java, PHP, Go, or Python, or any, any programming language. What happens many times the application will open too many sessions and those sessions will be not terminated properly by the application when end user stops using it. Or in another way, we can say that application is not proper closing the system resources which are used by the kernel or the operating system uh, for an example, uh, file handlers, uh, various application connections, networking connections, which are established on particular port. In this case, the lsof command on Linux operating system is very helpful that we can easily find out all open files on our Linux server. At the same time, we can also find out the processes which are accessing this application or these open files from particular directory. These are also known as the file descriptors. So here is a very simple example of lsof command, which we can use with particular process ID. We know that when Linux system starts, the first process ID is in it. And now in new modern systems, it is a systemd. So when we use lsof command, with hyphen p and process id, we will get the list of all open connections by this process id. 
At the same time, imagine you are working on some web server and that web server, we want to find out all open threads with Apache process. So we can easily use LSOF. Uh, we can grab the username and we can use head or tail, whatever we want. And if we know the process ID of particular process, application process, we can use with head and without head, we can grab and we can easily find out how many processes or open files are there from which directory they are open. Now, if you want to find out a particular that from which directory, how many open threads are there? So we can use plus T option with LSOF command and we can give the directory path. Keep in mind, we have to use absolute path of our Linux directory. So here I have shown that LSOF plus D and slash var directory. I can easily find out that right now this many open files connections are there on my Linux server. So LSOF is very useful, very helpful in troubleshooting and in monitoring. Thank you. If you are back uh, on your terminal, you press, you again, again type the top command. And when your top command start executing, press C. Press C on your uh, keyboard. When you press C, the command column will be expanded. And it will give you the entire path of that particular command. Let me know if anyone is trying and if it is uh, uh, getting that output in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and say. Yes, Maulik. I type yes. Right. So that way if. Uh, yes, Kadir. So that way you will come to know because in production environment, if any application is running and it might be possible that it is depend it, that particular process is also calling sub sub processes so that way you can exactly figure out that which of the application is consuming more cpu and you can see always here the highest consumption uh, uh, if any process is consuming high cpu it will be coming in top but this will be get rotating you can see your top output is all constant changing it will be not the remain same. Yeah, the processes will be getting up and down, up and down. Accordingly, the CPU utilization. Right. Even you can find out the RAM consumption from there. There are few more switches in top command. But right now you, you should uh, use this one. C, which will give you the command line. And sometimes if you press M, it will uh, give you the highest uses of the memory. Now, to come out from you can use Q but one more thing I want to highlight over here many times if server is not rebooted for many months even I had seen some of the production server which are not rebooted up to 400 and 500 days it is quite possible with Linux because it is very good in performance and if the application is configured tuned or uh, uh, maintain properly with the development team then there is no required to reboot your linux system at all so you can imagine 400 500 days there is no single reboot Kadir is saying here highlighted in block because of the current user as i can see vagrant and ec2 user in head yes fine you are practicing on ec2 instance right Kadir? yeah 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 perfect very good yeah so many times your server is not rebooted for many days or many months and in such cases it might be possible there are the few zombie processes running on your linux server so you can see there is one uh, place over here in top command zombie 
I, I remember one of the, my client who is running a telephony application. Uh, it is an asterisk server. If you know anyone had heard about that. Might be Paul, you might be aware about the asterisk, asterisk server, open PBX. So asterisk server is a free open source uh, solution for uh, a wipe, wipe solutions. Correct. Correct. VoIP. Yes, Vijendra. It is related to VoIP. So that application was developed by some of the uh, DEM team and they are frequently getting the zombie processes. And um, while doing troubleshooting, I came across that many zombie processes are uh, uh, there on the system. So we need to kill them. Now, let's say someone find out that this process is consuming the highest CPU, but I don't know about and I'm really doubt that it is really uh, useful or not. So you can use the kill command. Kill. I, I had not mentioned here because I thought I will explain you in the live class. So kill is a command. Kill, we can uh, use hyphen uh, nine and uh, a command name. I had typed in the uh, chat box. So uh, the nine is a kind of, uh, uh, you can find out what is a nine. That is your homework. Easily you can, uh, nice, powerful voiceover, phone system. So I think you have a brief about, uh, you type the brief about the uh, asterisk, asterisk server. Yes, correct. Fine. And Vijendra, yes, it is a nine is a kind of forceful. Yeah, but I actually want to give you, uh, give everyone to find out the answer. What is a nine significant, but that is fine. No, no issue. So while working on the live production server, please, please, please make sure you use kill command wisely or uh, by conforming with your colleague, conforming with your dev team, conforming with your manager, because if it is kill, then sometimes the process is required to start in a multiple way with help of multiple teams, right? So before using kill command, always, always cautious, be cautious. Uh, but if you are sure, yet this is my uh, kind of testing server, QA server, or this is, uh, it will be perfectly fine. And I'm, I'm not known to this service and I'm here for the uh, security reason. I need to kill it. Go ahead and delete, kill, kill that service. Once you kill that service, sometimes it will go into zombie state. Sometimes, I'm not saying every time, sometimes, because ultimately it's depend on the uh, service, how that is configured and how that is deployed. So that's why you can uh, use the top command and how you will kill. So I will explain again, let's consider that I cube dash API server, this is a uh, service. Uh, I want to kill so I can use this PID 2676 and with kill command kill space hyphen nine and I can give the PID so any particular command if you want to uh, any particular process you want to kill then you can use uh, kill command right let me also tell one more command Okay, perfectly. I, I don't know how you uh, all are. Okay, go ahead and type PS3. I had typed one command in chat box. Go ahead and type that command. And please tell me uh, what is the output or you can better chat type or you're unmute yourself or type in chat box, whatever is suitable to you. Um, it is giving the system D tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else? Anything else? Uh, I can see the, the main tree is system D and uh, upon yes. that there is just, there are a lot of sub uh, sub uh, branches just like uh, right. demon, lsmd, right. monster, uh, right. sshd. Correct. So are you, are you getting any, any bit, bit of idea what it means? 
command not found okay uh, uh, yeah I, i think in vagrant the, the command is not coming so i tried in in the ec2 machine you tried in ec2 but uh, you are able to see the output of ps3 command right yeah yeah but not and, in the vagrant machine yeah okay even i am able to see in the vagrant machine because i have done the installation of if it is a kind of package yes uh, process tree and uh, ashi uh, when you are not getting it because it, it it might be possible it is not installed on your virtual machine kind of so my main goal is to convey here is that ps tree is a command which will give you the hierarchy of the processes running on and system d is the kind of uh, uh you all know the service management utility initially it was init system uh, d is the latest version which is used by all majority of the linux distributions nowadays let it be red hat fedora centos ubuntu debian kali linux mint linux all majority of distributions are using system d now if anyone wants to uh, kill that particular process it also it might also possible it will not get kill in a in a first attempt it is quite possible many times in production environment i have faced that issue it is not getting kill in first attempt in that case you need to check out the details of that process and in such case uh, ps3 can help you there are few other ways but it is not uh, it will be a bit uh, lengthy process but you can step by step dig it out dig it out that what this process is and even in top command if that particular process is not getting deleted or one more thing you all know about the http server right now http server has a uh, many threads running on a single system and even you can increase the number of thread of your apache server let's say someone wants to do tuning of apache web server because the application is running uh, for millions of the users so you can configure apache in a way where your single uh, instance might be running 200 threads 100 threads accordingly uh, the tuning in that case if you kill one of the process Uh, and it is only uh, consumed by that one thread it will be get killed but rest of the http services will be running i mean i am giving you this example because this this type of scenario will come while you do the live trouble shooting so always better you check top in one in one terminal and try to kill it from the second terminal so you will come to know that that once successfully that process is killed it it will be uh, off from this output immediately because this is top is your kind of live utility it is kind of live monitoring of your linux system you can see on your system it is constantly updating right if you want to test open another terminal and start doing some operation like we do uh, dd command try to run dd command try to run uh, uh, vi command cat command do constant appending some file right and you can see the reflection in your top output so this is live monitoring tool within available on your linux system and very powerful very useful for troubleshooting and monitoring right i hope this will uh, give you uh, some uh, more information and I, i would say always keep practicing using top command to come out from top you know you can you can use the q q command fine does anyone has any question any doubt over here uh, ashish uh, the, yeah one, suppose if any front end application or or the back end suppose my sql or if it is running yes. but how it is show i can see command but how it is show us like it is apache it is uh, http right. it is how where, where we can see that one here in this top command yeah so uh, as mentioned i i mentioned earlier so you can see the last column command now when you yeah, type yeah yeah that's what when you when you type c over here it will give the full path the absolute path of that particular service mm, mm, mm. okay you can try you can start apache yeah uh, quickly install as tdp totally yeah
Uh, yeah. Carry on. I'll, I'll do yeah. in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Now, how you will now again, Kadir? This will help you uh, to your uh, to find out more. One more command which is very useful. Useful, and you know the as Kathir mentioned earlier. I I don't know how I can uh, find out, but the ps command. This will give you some uh, good uh, insight. You know what process you have started your custom uh, application, right? It is built on Java. Alert say built on the Node.js, and you are trying to grab that particular word with ps command with the help of ps command right now if Kathir, you have installed http just start it with systemd i hope everyone is aware about the systemd command i had not mentioned over here system ctl status Right, the HTTP is a kind of Apache 2. You should use Apache 2 if you are running it on the Ubuntu. If you are running it on CentOS, the uh, HTTP will be the default one. Now, this will give you the status of your HTTP service. It is a service on your system. Now, when you use psaux command, or do one thing, initially only execute psaux. If you are in front of the system, those who are in front of the system, you can only use this command, execute this command. You might notice. And now, then second, you can again run the same command, but use pipe wc l. Use this one. I have typed a command uh, in chat box. Please, please run that and let me know what number you are getting. wc is a combination again it will help you to find out i use the hyphen l so it will count out uh, count down all the lines which are uh, output of ps hyphen aux command if any particular service or process is had open multiple threads when i say multiple thread you can uh, keep one http uh, example in your mind where Apache runs by default many threads, two, four, five, ten threads. It by default it runs. So if you have started Apache, you you might find the more output. And PS AUX pipe. Now you can use any any word grab, and even you can use grab space hyphen i. Then use Apache Docker whatever Firefox whatever uh, you want to grab from your system. Just a minute. Okay, so ps is a command which is grab is filtration. Yes, Vijay, grab is a filtration. Even in earlier session, we have used grab many times. So whenever you okay, Naya, this is only a single output. You grab Apache and you get the only one line. It means that Apache, I would say. Yes, I would say Apache is not installed or not running on your system. Can you check the status of your Apache service on your uh, box? You can use this command systemctl status httpd not running. Okay, now uh, do you know how to start Apache with systemctl? Okay, great. Then you can start it and again you can grab it from a ps command. So the grab utility will grab the word which you are giving over here. You are mentioning the last. If anyone is searching for the MySQL processes, use mysql apache docker whatever java node.js jboss whatever script
perfect so this is the example where uh, you will get multiple output when you are searching a particular word with ps command now kadir coming back to your one of the query uh, i am typing one key combination command combination over here everyone just start your top command and find out which is the highest cpu consumption process on your system right now and check out its process id from the first column this is live exercise you should do it for more practice op execute the top command find out the first process which is consuming the highest cpu and find out its pid from the first column and execute the command ps3 space hyphen p with the your uh, pid i have typed the command in the chat box of zoom replace 1 2 3 4 5 with the particular pid on your system uh, naya you can try with the uh, 7734 or if anyone else is running another process yeah, they can replace the pid with 1 2 3 4 so ps3 will give you all threads and the pid numbers which is started right now on your system and that's where you will come to know that how many threads and how uh, how frequently that particular service is running different uh, threads according to the configuration so ps3 is a command which will give you a kind of a uh, information about all running processes of that particular service in a tree manner nothing else a kind of a, uh, a good representation and quick view you will come to know about your service if it is a running java Uh, application you will find out all uh, uh, 10 20 30 50 uh, services or threads i would say right so please keep this thing in your mind ps is very useful command you can find out uh, uh, and you can troubleshoot it many times you will find hell lot of processes in your uh, ps command uh, and that is only due yes nia so i think uh, ps3 uh, it needs to be installed on your system and it might be the part of some packages i have updated my system with few packages so i am getting it very easily yes so kind of if ps3 command is not found in your system this will be a kind of exercise how you can install ps3 on your linux box okay moving ahead uh, going ahead now someone ask you in the interview or it will be very helpful on your live server that how you will check the ram on your linux system so uh, before executing this command or knowing this command i would say i will give uh, i will give you a, a brief about the ram or memory utilization on your linux system uh, as right now you all are running your virtual machine on your host operating system on your laptop or or on your desktop so you might have 8 gb 16 gb ram on your system so that is your physical ram of your host operating system if anyone is running only a single linux system on uh, server or on desktop or on laptop then they will get that physical ram output when they will use a free command but if you are running virtual machine then you might be getting a 2 gb or 1 gb or uh, 4 gb max to max how it is depend on how you have configured your virtual machine while creating it and on linux there is also a concept of a swap space now what is a swap space imagine it it uh, it was very old concept and nowadays uh, this uh, swap partition is uh, mostly used with uh, some server which are running on linux and they are running with database related applications or they are running some database instances let's say mysql oracle uh, postgres sql mongodb kind of but not Uh, oracle is uh, an oracle mysql are most uh, or postgres sql these three are most popular uh, database engine on linux operating system even oracle had designed their own linux which is known as oracle enterprise linux olp okay fine 
Naya had downloaded the package, but it moved to the next line. I didn't get your uh, the last sentence, but I moved move, it moved to the next line. What is the process uh, seven seven four four? Which process is running? If it is Apache, I can see from your output it is Apache. Then it is only uh, you you have tried to uh, check out the PST for one thread of Apache. So simple, it will not give you the list of uh, all processes, all all threads rather than processes. Yes, you have uh, you have executed PST command on single thread. I would say you can try to run PST command with uh, the main. Okay, if it's a multiple thread, then it will show the exactly, structure. Exactly, exactly. See the Kathir's output here. Correct. Yes, yes. Correct. I got it. I got yeah. it. Yeah. It, it depends. You, and this is the way how you will come to know that how I can use these commands on my system. Thanks, Kathir, for sharing. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's good one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So the swap space is now not, uh, now, uh, not that much concern on uh, cloud instances because uh, we are only running the applications not running the database uh, but uh, uh, before few years or even it might be uh, it is useful but people are uh, moving to cloud and they are decoupling their application they are creating a cloud based applications so the ec2 instances are mainly used for running the applications even in that case you can use the swap partition you can use the swap as a ram so concept of swap partition is that let's say you have physical RAM on your host operating system is 8 GB. Now you're running some database related application or some heavy application on your Linux machine. Now in such a case when your 8 GB entire 8 GB and that is about to consume by different applications on your system. And if you're running out of space at that time, if you have configured your Linux system with space, space, uh, swap partition, then swap is a kind of a separate partition on your hard disk. It is not a physical RAM. It is a kind of 1 GB, 2 GB, 4 GB, 10 GB of partition. Like we create another partition. It's like slash home, slash var, slash opt. We will see in the file system hierarchy uh, session. I'm, I'm mostly going to take that session next Saturday. What is Linux file system? What is the file system hierarchy? What what all things we need to check or we need to take care. So if you have created 5 GB of swap partition on your Linux system and your physical RAM is running out of uh, uh, capacity, then your swap partition will be start using and it will start doing paging. Ultimately, memory is paging in and paging out any particular process is consuming that space to process it and it will give you the result and it will be release the memory but many processes are running at a time on the system at the time your swap partition will be useful to your system and it will be helpful your running applications which are memory hungry and it will help i know uh, my one of the customer they uh, uh, they are running Java based application and we all know that Java is memory mammoth application. They consume memory in a hell hell. They are uh, consuming too much memory. Java applications require too much memory. Right. And uh, one time they are planning to upgrade their EC2 instance up to 124 GB of RAM. That was stupidity. But I was I want to convey you here that Java based applications are consuming too much RAM. So any, any, any time, if any one of you come across any applications, which is running on your Linux systems, if they are Java based, then find out what, what is physical RAM, how that Java application is structured, designed and deployed, what all uh, things a development team have taken care. If you found there is no swap space, recommend them to go and create swap partition and add in add it on your system you can do it you can add swap space partition anytime on your system and nowadays due to the cloud native you can easily add 10 gb 20 gb easily 
you can create one partition you will attach it, it into your ec2 instance and you can convert it to swap partition if you are swap how much swap partition right now on your system you can check it with this command or even you in output of the free hyphen h command again free space hyphen h in this command you will come to know that what is a swap partition how much swap is used right now and how much is free even this is output uh, i had tried to uh, capture it from the proc the proc directory the pseudo file system and proc mem info this is a file in that you will come to know what is a swap partition right so this is also a good way uh, where you will find out the totally ram free available what is a buffer what is a cache ram every detail every information you will come to know from the proc mem info right you can execute you can use the lace command in this way in this way also or even you can do cat cat space proc mem info space pipe less there are multiple ways to uh, do the one thing on the command line so i use lace command initially and then the file now see here this there is a one uh, parameter dirty dirty 196 kb uh when i was working for uh, cementec uh, i think 8 8 10 years back i was running few servers with red hat linux and those servers has huge dirty memory and that was they are running on the dell power edge servers dell uh, dell company the hardware company and i come across while doing troubleshooting the dirty memory is very high very high so uh, we have raised concern with the dell uh, uh, initially we raised the concern with the uh, red hat but we come to know this is a hardware related uh, issue then we raised the ticket to the dell and they uh, they got agree yeah this is a problem of hardware so sometimes if your physical ram is uh, having a too much dirty memory it means it is not performing very well even you have a 16 gb 64 gb of ram but how much dirty ram so it depends if it is a uh, uh, many times hardware has a aging effect or also if it is a server is very old then even uh, some of the performance degradation will also happen right but uh, the ultimately uh, thing you should keep in a mind that if you are uh, troubleshooting uh, with mem related Uh, memory related uh, concerns then please check all this thing and you will find out uh, what is the problem with the memory related applications right keep in mind proc man info free uh, free iphone am free iphone h both is the fine find out your swap partition find out uh, what is there in your uh, mem info uh as we free hyphen m and free hyphen h gives her same result h is the kind of human readable you will get output in a gb and in m okay. you mostly will get in the mb megabyte mb uh, you can try it on your system yeah i tried it yes actually okay, okay h gives her which m and b oh yeah yeah 88 58 m and 2 gb okay that's why i got it yes thanks now another thing you can check if you want to constant monitor your uh, memory then you can use the vm state command now the beauty of vm state is that you can specify you can specify how many second interval and how many times i need it so here i had mentioned one second interval five times so every single second i will get the output you can try straight away on your system vm stay you can keep 2 and you can keep 10 whatever number you want to and you will come to know about all your uh, live memory monitoring this is superb yes yes kadi right correct Maulik is also trying. Yes, correct. So uh, uh, again, if you have doubt that yes, memory are the only uh, concern on my Linux server and applications uh, 
uh, is not performing up to that mark you can uh, jot out these all information and you can share with the uh, development team so they can work out work uh, around for the performance tuning there are few more area on linux system where you can do the performance tuning but these are the main basic things which you should know game state is also good command now moving uh, to the storage storage utilization ultimately we all know that if you uh, right now you all are running on the vm or someone is running ec2 instance you might be having your 8 gb partition on your ec2 or you might be having your 20 gb 30 gb 40 gb of your virtual machine uh, running on your virtual box and vagrant then uh, df command is uh, very good to find out your disk space uh, utilization so uh, you can run it df space hyphen h you will come to know that what all file system you have right now on your system and how much this uh, uh, utilization how much space it is used by each particular file system now keep one thing in a mind you you find that udev is zero tempfs is zero you can see so ma majority of time if you find the udev is a zero you can you should consider those are the pseudo file systems or they are the temporary file system they are only used by the kernel for their uh, purpose for kernel operations purpose you don't have to worry about those things you should only aware and you should only worry about this partition slash even i am not concerned about the vagrant partition because this is on my uh, vagrant slash vagrant partition is always uh, use my host os uh, space also so i'm not worried i i should only worry about the my slash partition because if my slash partition is full i will be not able to log into the system simple and uh, i swear that many times if you are any of the partition let's say you have separate slash var partition and your var partition is about 100 gb and due to the old log and due to some other uh, application log if your slash var or any other partition is gets full you will face difficult difficulty while logging into next time so make sure you should keep your storage uh, uh, and uh, you do monitoring on your production servers whenever you do uh, uh, job anywhere you should always consider that you should have minimum minimum 20 percentage free space on your slash 20 percentage whatever size is there this is a kind of an industry based practice you should have always 20 percentage free space on your slash partition if you have a separate partition slash var slash home and different then it is altogether a different thing because uh, my one of the customer was running tableau it is a kind of uh, data processing and data warehouse. So that W server is running on Linux, on CentOS Linux, and they have the var partition, and they have the slash opt partition for running their application. And these both partition always get full. They both are almost eighty and hundred GB. Then we come out. Then we come to know after some months that they are keeping logs. Hell, lot of logs on the same system where they are running up uh, that tableau server we recommend that do not do this if you are old our uh, logs are old then rotate them and place it somewhere else please keep your system free so that application will perform in a very well manner if it is a very 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 important logs then you can upload into s3 bucket simple if company is not using s3 then you can suggest them some central storage server where they can dump their logs because now a day uh, nowadays due to the compliance issue many companies suggest uh, for audit purpose compliance and security purpose they need one year two year logs of their applications right so it is very costly to keep all logs on the system we should as a system admin as a cloud as a devops admin we have to suggest that please keep logs on the s3 bucket or some other central storage but never 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 store more logs on your system it is fine up to saving log up to three months and six months because every time you don't require to go and fetch the logs for your troubleshooting purpose so up to two months three months four months it is perfectly fine you are maintaining logs on your system but again if it, they are consuming more space i would say always keep watch on the log size of your application 
you will come to know from slash var slash var is a directory which majority time 90 percentage the logs are stored in slash var slash log or slash var some particular application directory folder and inside they have the log directory so you should use and you should keep this practice monitoring your storage space on your system like right now you are running uh, ec2 instance and you have 8 gb of the partition now if you if you and you have uh, only use one and a half gb you have you have 6.6 gb free on your system now if you reach up to 90 and 95 gb and still your directory is getting full and full next time it will be difficult for you to log in into system because if the partition has any of the partition which is lying under the root in under the slash if it is a full it is a difficult for a user to log in so df is a very good command i would i, I would like to share one more combination of df command just check in the uh, chat box df hyphen h and use the capital t the capital T will give you the type of the file system. Those who are in front of the system just execute this command df h and capital T. You will find one more column, same as the previous output, but that will be the one more column. And you might be seeing the XFS, ext4, ext3, a different type of the file system. So, this is again very useful if uh, uh, you're troubleshooting because uh, many times you come to that this is the file system which we have created externally or we have created later on so hyphen t will give you that now one more command here i had mentioned is lsblk yes the type is a correct the type is a extra column the xfs is a very robust file system nowadays it is very 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 supportive for higher uh, memory uses or higher uh, performance uh, based applications it is a free open source and very uh, robust file system xfs even ext4 is very robust and open source very 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 uh, super duper file system ext4 ext4 xfs are highly used nowadays in industry production environment right fine so now lsblk this is very useful uh, sometimes when you are adding some extra uh, volume on your system and you want to add it uh, under your existing system so just right now keep in mind right now the virtual machine which i have installed uh, it it use the lvm this is a concept to do uh, the logical partition of my entire hard disk but i can easily come to know that my hard disk is divided into Two partitions right now i have two partitions but first is a slash and second is a swap swap has a never mount point keep this thing in a mind never forget this thing swap has a no mount point simple it will be never you will never get any slash swap partition no right it is only some portion on your system which is working or acting as a ram but here from this output I, I can say that my hard disk the virtual hard disk which i have created under virtual box it is a 64 gb in a size and in that i have one main partition sda1 slash dev slash sda1 and that again it is a uh, rename or defined by vagrant hyphen hyphen vg hyphen root the same name is mounted on slash partition you can see the df hyphen h output uh, in the above image it is mentioned in the slash dev slash mapper this mapper is only coming due to the lvm type of the partition which my system had created automatically so slash dev slash mapper and the particular partition and you can see it is a slash it is used by uh, system and it is a 62 gb in the size right now and 4.3 gb is used 55 gb is available many times people get confused if they get some more partitions over here and they say it is 100 percent full so immediately go in that particular directory or partition and find out which is particular directory is consuming the more space 
So troubleshoot that issue. You can use the du hyphen s command, du hyphen ss command. See in the uh, the next image. You can use uh, sudo if it is not giving you output by the du hyphen ss straight away. Then here, what I had tried, I had tried to find out the size of each directory slash var slash etc slash home slash opt. But if you have some particular file inside this particular directory, you can give that path also. Likewise, sudo space du space hyphen sh space slash var slash log slash httpd one dot log. So it will this du hyphen s command du hyphen sh command will give the actual mostly the size of that particular directory or file and you will come to know that if my slash partition slash var is consuming 100% which is the file system or which is the directory or file it is consuming high space if it is not required you can immediately delete and free the space right please let me know if this is not clear to anyone this storage system are block storage Kadir, uh, I would say yes. Uh, OS can be installed on block uh, device only. We can't uh, do installation or uh, file storage or any different type of storage. So block storage, whenever we are installing uh, operating system, they all use the block storage. DF-P, okay. So what do you want to convey with DF-P? Hmm. Okay. Okay. So okay. when we use when we use this command, so we are um, getting this uh, one zero two four blocks. That means it is a block storage, right? This all our blocks to Yes, yes, yes. You can see it. Ultimately, uh, when you do OS installation, it uses the uh, uh, disk utility to install that particular OS. The F disk and G parted are the few uh, different utilities, but majority Linux uh, use the F disk and few other uh, services to partition a disk. And that's why it uh, mentioning you in the uh, block when you use the hyphen P. Okay. So ultimately divided the you know if you know the structure of the hard disk, it uh, it has the sectors. So that is a a bit uh, out of uh, our current topic. If you know the uh, architecture and structure of the hard disk, it is divided into multiple. Uh, uh, I would say uh, sectors and. Uh, different terminology of hard disk and that uh, everything uh, works under a block every block uh, is a chunk you you know the bit zero and every everything is written on the hard disk is zero and one so to format in a very well uh, manner they use a particular size of the blocks fine so find out to find out any uh, size of any particular file or directory which is consuming high space you can always use the du hyphen ss command which is very useful and handy you can see the output of every directory is a different in a size. Slash var on my system is consuming 3.3 GB. It is is consuming 5 MB only. 5 MB. Home is consuming 300 MB. Open is consuming 147 MB. So slash var always uh, have the log, stored log on system. So please keep in mind, keep watch your uh, system uses, storage uses. Is it, it is very, very uh, useful. Okay, now how many uh, of you have tried to do installation or uh, anyone had given a chance to do a GUI based installation? I would say it is uh, not uh, required right now on any of the environment, but yes, at least it is a good if you know. Uh, no, okay, so ultimately. Uh, it is very uh, simple if you uh, if you have any ISO of any system I would say uh, if anyone wants to try right now and if anyone has ISO please share your screen we can do that uh, installation or uh, uh, you required uh, space on your system 
uh, you can create a new virtual machine you can use that iso and you can do the installation of uh, particular os uh, this point uh, you should keep in mind if you uh, are working anywhere these are the main three distributions which are in main line in the industry right now and uh, debian based distros are example of uh, debian based uh, linux oss are ubuntu kali linux mint linux these all are debian based and red hat based are centos and fedora centos is more more popular it is using the same kernel which red hat uses in their production environment and suze earlier this company was a novel a novel not where and novel had uh, open uh, open suze distribution which is also a good kd based environment so right now if you find out the uh, stack wise uh, across the production environment in the globe we will find ubuntu uh, centos and red hat are mainly used operating systems whatever it is a production testing qa any staging any any environment uh, and uh, there are two way to access your linux box if anyone can share their screen and if you can find out the virtual box open the virtual box right now if you have created any virtual machine from vagrant you are accessing your system with cli and if anyone has installed uh, virtual box and on that if anyone has installed any os you are accessing it by gui gui is not recommended anywhere in the production environment and even you will not get it uh, due to so many issues uh, mainly every production environment is running with the uh, cli based installation and if you remember like kadir is right now using ec2 you all had used ec2 earlier uh you will directly log in into your linux machine with ssh so that is directly lending you in the linux machine via ssh uh, way by using 22 number port and by entering your uh, remote machine with ssh you can do all desired operations or all, all troubleshooting or monitoring activity on that particular uh, machine now i would i would say uh, uh, these installation steps are very basic if anyone is in interested just share their screen if he or she has the iso downloaded we can do the installation does anyone has any iso image ubuntu centos uh, recently i tried this uh, 2020 ubuntu Oh, the latest version, the April version, twenty o four, not twenty twenty, twenty o four. So what? 20... Yeah, you you yeah. name it twenty. Ubuntu always give release after every six months. In every year, Ubuntu has a two distributions coming out, twenty o four and twenty. Yeah, yeah, correct. So twenty. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. Majority every two years, Ubuntu release the LTS version, long term support. so now i think 2004 this year they have also released the lts and it will give support officially support of that distribution will be up to next 3 to 5 years so i'm not very sure but they might be giving support up to 2024 or 2025 because it is 2020 in lts version so good kathir if you have tried with ubuntu 2004 you might get some new ui or you might get some new packages on your system how you have yeah. installed how you have configured or where you have installed it on virtual box or on native host os no virtual virtual box but uh, <laughs> it is it, i think because of the iso size was, i think what was the size point, of iso yeah i think it was 2.8 uh, gb I think. so yeah i, I didn't remember and, it in the top of my head how much ram 2.7 gb Okay, how much RAM you have selected while creating that virtual box instance? Uh, I think mm. uh, in past I have also faced this issue while uh, teaching someone, and the RAM is a main concern when you are launching your virtual machine with GUI mode. I would say uh, give two point five GB or three GB of RAM if you have that sufficient. Okay, it is. 
1 gb ayala correct that's why it might you might will be not able to log in or you might be get stuck uh, while doing installation do one thing don't do change any template just increase your ram and try again you will okay. definitely get because i am i also doubt in 2004 they have made lot of changes in uh, gui plus they have made some more uh, additional packages for system mm -hmm. monitoring mm -hmm. and from docker and from kubernetes perspective mm -hmm. i don't i don't know because i have not tried i am going to try it in uh, next one but due to busy schedule i am not able to test it uh, naya you are asking that any particular link for gui mode uh means you are asking uh, to download the gui mode iso yeah, yeah, yes i says to download and uh, to see uh, how it works like a step by step procedure for that i never tried it so i don't want to take any risk fine so okay. uh, let me tell you you have the virtual box on your system right yes yes hmm? on virtual box you have to create one new virtual machine without help of vagrant forget about okay. the vagrant right now if you are going mm -hmm. for the gui mode the link okay. which molik had shared will let you download the ubuntu os and that okay. uh, i think adir you have downloaded it it, be, it might be nearby 2.5 gb or 3 gb of the iso size mm -hmm. yeah jigger is the previous year i just updated to 2004 yesterday it is required 2 gb okay yes so jigger has that latest update iso size you uh when you download it it will be around about 2.5 or 3 gb now once you download that iso you have to create one new virtual machine in your virtual box 2.5 gb yes okay. maulik is saying very uh, specific 2.5 gb now when you create one virtual machine in virtual box it will ask you something what type of uh uh Okay, let's do this in a way. If anyone wants to try and share their screen and show how that uh, template will be created, um, Kadir, Jigar, Maulik, if anyone had tried, anyone, if anyone wants to share the screen with others, um, I can do. Maybe. It. Yeah, uh, yeah, Shivan, go ahead. If you. Anyone is fine. I let me know who is trying. I I will I will make him. और हरा होस्ट क्या बात है क्या बात है क्या बात है ओ मेरा माय गॉड म्यूट नहीं सी आई कैन डू आशी मैडम इज सेइंग होस्ट डिसेबल या आई थिंक यू नीड टू चेंज द सेटिंग्स या या आई आई एम मेकिंग यू को होस्ट Yes, I have uh, make you a co-host, uh, Ashivan. You can. I I will stop sharing my screen. Yes. i uh, i think a uh, screen sharing is only showing the uh terminal the vagrant at the local host uh the second screen i think virtual box screen is not shared by you ashiman uh we can see the uh, the linux command line right now are you sharing the same or you are sharing the virtual box no i have i am sharing this screen uh i think you need to select the particular window of virtual box because we are able to okay uh, only see the command line we can at the local how can uh just stop sharing screen and uh, again click on the uh, share screen and then uh, select the window of a virtual box and then click on the share Uh, or you can enter this uh, share the desktop anyway is perfectly fine okay. i think i have share enter desktop now can you can you uh, open the virtual box window yeah sure yeah
yes so this is the default screen of virtual box whenever you open virtual box on your host os you will be able to uh, see similar screen if you have multiple virtual machines running on your left hand side you will get all those virtual machines now if you want to create a new virtual machine you can click on the new button new icon okay new 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 uh, uh, yes yeah yes, correct now this okay. is a template base it will ask you which operating system you want to create just just type here ubuntu 2004 and the machine folder it is asking you where you want to store uh, the all configuration related files and uh, this virtual machine so you can keep it the default one uh, ashimam right now you are storing all your virtual machines under uh, c users anal virtual box vms that is perfectly fine now if you have some particular version then you can uh, select the type and version but right now you type it open to it uh, fetch automatically so you can click on the next screen correct so here kadir i think while creating your template you have selected or you yeah, default. might have not changed anything so i would say just go and increase the ram uh, uh, ashimam how many physical ram on your system on this laptop uh i'm not sure do you want to check uh i'm not sure uh okay how how can i check go to the control panel uh oh uh, click on yeah control panel system or you can directly click on the systems fine uh, okay. system last column second last of system uh just wait here second column last option second column last option system yeah okay. so you have 8gb of ram see here you can see their system configuration Reason. yeah 8gb 8gb so that is why you can go up to 2gb or 2.5gb even so uh, okay. click over here in the uh, the box 1024 mb and uh, uh, do it Two four zero zero two five zero zero. Perfect. Ashish, Ashish, yeah. I, I, in in my case, right? So can I have installed, but only thing is this memory says can I increase later? I but think this has should, to be. Yeah, I think you should go to the settings and try to increase your RAM. I don't but, remember how if it it is allow you or not. I'm no, not. that's what I'm saying. It is that that option is uh, not highlighting. So that means uh, it is. I think then you need to create a new template. New template, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah new template. That's fine. But that is fine. Uh, it will not. And yeah. do do the base thing. If you are worried about the uh, earlier system, which are the delete that one. And while you delete any virtual machine, it will uh, ask you to delete everything on the system. So make sure you delete everything because it is not useful to you. Uh, unnecessary. It will consume uh, space on your system. yeah that's correct <laughs> yeah we'll yeah so that is a best practice even i do that because in one month i have might be creating eight to 10 different virtual machines for my practice and testing purpose so every month i have to do that task fine uh, let's go ahead yeah 2.5 2500 mb so it is 2.5 gb of the ram yeah go ahead next create a virtual hard disk now the default option is sufficient create click on the create yeah virtual box disk image is fine because we are not importing any other type of uh, vdi so it is fine next so dynamic allocated so if it is required it will consume more space uh, from your hard disk so that is also fine now here uh, it is asking you how much initial space you want to allocate to this virtual machine so i always give 20 25 30 gb to be on very safer side uh, ashiben if you are comfortable i can uh, uh can i try you have given sorry it's gone somewhere Fine. i don't know click on the storage storage uh, above one above yeah uh let's try click on the ubuntu vdi controller sata ubuntu vdi uh, yeah click over there click on that click click 
No. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Cancel this one. Cancel. Uh, we need to click on that empty, right? Uh, controller empty. Uh, I, just a minute. I'm not getting option. Can you give the control to me? Yeah, sure. No problem. Rooms. I'm not getting that option. View options, fit to window. Click on the Ubuntu 24 on the left hand side. Right click or go to the settings. Click on the settings button. Let's try if it is allowing to change the 10 GB to 20 GB. Yeah, click over there. Settings. Settings, settings. No, here, here on the top hand side. Uh, here. Uh, no, just go Let's... up a top side, middle, new settings and the green arrow. No, 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 not that menu side. Come in the in, uh, in between of the screen, center of okay. the screen. Oh, sorry, settings. Yeah, okay. Click on the storage. Okay, I think it is opening storage on the left hand side. Yeah. Now click on the controller SATA. Yeah. Yeah. SATA. Yes. No, and yeah. above, the, above, above that. Okay. Uh, your host IO cache. No. And now click on the Ubuntu again. I think. Click on that Ubuntu. Uh -uh. I think go ahead and delete this and we'll create a new one. We don't want to take experiment right now rather than okay. troubleshooting this. Delete this one. Uh, no, right okay. click, right click, uh, remove, remove, fifth option. Mm. Yeah, okay. Delete all remove. files. Delete yeah. all files. Oh, delete all files. Yeah. Now create, go ahead, yeah. create a okay. new one. Okay. New, same, Ubuntu 2004. Yeah, fine. Next. Two five oh. Create a new virtual hard disk. VDI, perfect. Dynamic allocated, yes. Here, go to the box, the 10 GB box and keep it up to 30 GB. Replace one with the three only. Three zero. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Now you have created the template to uh, uh, install new uh, operating system. Now uh, you have downloaded the uh, Ubuntu ISO. Uh, I have downloaded before, but I think I then I delete it that one. Uh, um, the required ISO. Okay, I will let you, I will show right now how to create. You can later on download the same link which I think Maulik or someone had shared in the chat box. Now click on the start button, start button on the middle of the screen above, middle uh, of the screen, start button. Uh, yeah. Start, uh, start, start, above. Oh, yeah, sorry, Put yeah. Start. Now, after creating the template, when you do a start, it will ask you for the source of ISO because after creating template for the first time, it required ISO file. This is not virtual. This is not a virtual machine, which we are creating with the help of Vagrant. What Vagrant does, Vagrant has already created box images. And when we do Vagrant in it with Vagrant configured file, Vagrant file, we are mentioning that file that go on the Vagrant Hub and pull this box image for, from Vagrant Hub. But right now we are creating a virtual machine on our host. 
so we need to provide the required iso image keep in mind okay. if you are going to install any of the operating system on any host os any server you required iso image or you required a bootable pen drive or bootable iso uh, dvd whatever nowadays it is a gone practice everyone is using images ec2 image vagrant box image or any few other bit uh, uh, bitnami images there are hell of hell lot of options are available in internet right docker images whatever so right now to do uh, to progress in this installation if we required iso image once you have the download iso image uh, you have to click on the yellow button and you have to provide the path of that iso image and then your installation will start can you click on that yellow folder do you have any other older uh, ubuntu or any other iso um and go to the download folder you might have uh, some older image i think i have clear everything so i don't now, have now go now 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 here in, in the bottom side all virtual optical disk file click here and then select all files all files the last option so scroll away scroll away scroll down scroll down uh iso image iso image no 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 scroll down scroll down scroll down scroll down no you don't have so i think the you don't have any iso image so once you download any of the iso image the cent os latest version or ubuntu latest version you can select that iso image and click on the open when you click on the open it will fetch the iso image which is bootable and it will start the installation okay. right yeah and once installation start there are few steps which we have to uh, keep in mind i think kadir you have done the installation even jigar bhai had also done the installation so uh, in i think we have the group in common group we can uh, help each other to do the installation if uh, everyone is agree on that part jigar bhai hello there is some uh, background noise from your mic yeah now it is is so yes i would say once you select the yeah hello we are not able to hear you jigar bhai fine so once you have the iso your installation will proceed and you can uh uh take help of other member but it is very simple and straight away i only want to mention the partition part how you uh, how best you can do the partition of your linux system so if you do the automatically it will create it own the entire partition will be created its own yeah i think someone is typing the jigger yes i can help uh, whoever wants to install this yes uh, jigger bhai is ready patik yes i see just wanted to ask you how do they install linux if they are more than 50 60 machines so uh, which environment it is if it is a cloud environment i think you know uh, better in the ec2 we can give the number of uh, machines how many machines we want to spin up nowadays this uh, uh, this is not uh, required immediately because everyone do uh, uh, create a first machine with all required packages then they will create the image of that machine particular machine and then they will use they will create ami you can create ami of any linux system in a multiple way if you are on the aws cloud we have uh, uh, already seen this right how to create linux ami if you are on the your linux system even then you can take a help of vagrant machine you can create your virtual machine you can configure you can add delete the required packages and you can create a new machine image from your existing virtual machine and then you can do the installation in whatever manner if you want to spin up 50 machines i think the cloud is the best option on your uh, local system it will be difficult to create a 50 images because it will not support you the required hardware right but with ami you can 
uh, easily create uh, your desired uh, state of operating system with all required packages, services, softwares, everything. So the next time you don't require to do any installation. Yes. So uh, uh, please try to download the image and uh, try to do the installation. So you will mix your hands dirty and you can do the installation. It is very straightforward and very easy. The only concern and only thing which you should consider while doing installation is the partition type what type of partition you want to create if you select the by default it will do installation its own but if you want to configure your partition your own way then it is a bit uh, tricky or even it is not that hard it is very easy you have to select your entire 30 gb of the partition and you have to create multiple partitions on the same hard disk and you can you can do the installation so please post in the uh, group uh, Jigar Bhai is also ready. I think Kadir is also there. He has also done the installation. So he can I have one help. question on this machine. Uh, sure. if, if you can help. You know, in a past, maybe last year, I think I was trying with the, these virtual uh, machine, virtual box and uh, downloading the uh, okay. virtual machine from the ISO image, right? Okay. So like, uh, like this is install and this is running and I am using it. I used the command. I set up something. But when I shut down, and next day, I am starting the same machine, but it wasn't starting from the same place where I left. So does it happen in a normal way or we have to start yeah. every day from the new start? No, once you machine, your machine is created and you shut it down, yes. you are doing power off. Yes. So now, next day you will start it. It will ask you for the username and password. But with in my case, I don't know, maybe I was doing some mistake because I was not fine. understanding or anything. Correct. So, so I, would, I will try yeah, again. Yeah, I would recommend it. Just download the required ISO, Ubuntu, yes. CentOS, whatever flavor you like. You just download mm -hmm. the ISO. Follow the same step, which we have just saw yes. on the uh, Ashivan's yes. laptop. And try it again. If you stuck somewhere, just share your screenshot. Yeah, so sure. Thanks. Definitely help. And uh, it is in our case, every time you don't require to do installation. It yeah, is I will try again with that. Instance. Simple. Mm -hmm. You shut it down, you start it, you log in, you work it. Yes. But if you shut down system, your all running processes, all running server or services mm -hmm. will be shut down. Simple. Yeah. yeah. Your Apache, you need to start it again. If you're not set in a uh, enable mode with the system D, you need to mm -hmm. start it again. But that you don't need to do installation again. That is first. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, anyone has any other question, then please do type in the chat box or unmute yourself and ask your question. Otherwise, Should I just power off, yeah? Power off the yeah, machine? Yeah. You, can, you can do power off. Later on, you can start it and provide the required ISO path and it will do the rest of uh, operation for you.